All right, look at here. Hey, Rob, how's hey, it going? Buddy. I'm good. How are you doing? Did you always look like you just did something you probably shouldn't have done? You always look guilty. I just want you to know that you must have gotten in trouble a lot as a kid. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying about hey, which I'm thing, glad... but you're not wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm glad you're here. I got my dad, Dr. Pepper. I got my serverless for everyone cup. I have it my non green for... water today. Yeah, that's, so we can that's actually weird, see it. dude. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. I, uh, I don't want to get into branding, but not my favorite there. Right I there. probably shouldn't have shown the brand on the air, but here That's we are. All right. That's okay. Well, I say Diet Dr. Pepper every time we're on here. So, hey, John, how's it going? John's joining us. Made it this week. Yeah, he missed it last week. I almost banned him from the show, but um, and drinking peach tea. I'm not a fruit tea guy either. So, But this is not about Eric Johnson's opinions. This here is about Sam. So I should just Sam. If you're not familiar with Sam, if this is your first time here, the same as the service application model, and then it has the same CLI, which is its accompaniment CLI or companion CLI, sidekick CLI, however you want to say that. So um, you happen to love peach. Well, that's not your fault. Uh, I won't judge you until we are uh, <laughs> after the show. So Rob and I are going to be answering questions. Rob will probably be answering more questions. I'm going to be talking fast about how we do open API. Did you have you ever used open API in Sam, Rob? Me. Uh, I have, yeah. Yeah. and I pretty much ripped it all off from your code. But I okay. also, okay. This, a lot of people might know this is Swagger. This is uh, back in That's the day right. we used to compose our APIs at swagger.yaml for people That's right. before it got fashionable to hate on YAML. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's an interesting thing to point out. Uh, Swagger, uh, it used to be Swagger. It's still Swagger. It's the same thing. But when they updated to, I think it was when they went to version three, right? They switched it to Open API because it's more of them. I don't know exactly when, but is it two? I think it's I think three, two. not two, but it might be three. So either way, you're looking at it. If you can't hear this, this has to be confusing. Is he doing rabbit signs? I don't yeah. know what he's doing. So we anyway, video alts. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Big time. We I, I got to get the screen cap going. So, um, but yes. So Open API is a way of describing an API gateway, and it's not just API gateway on Amazon. It's it's that is the open standard for describing APIs, and a lot of the mm -hmm. API services use that, both API Gateway REST and HTTP, and you can do some with uh, WebSocket as well, support uh, open API. Now, again, all it does is it describes your API. Here's my route, here's my endpoint, different things like that. But it's extensible, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. You can add tags to open API, and so what AWS did is we went in and said, here's the API Gateway extensibility tags that will tie whatever route you create an open API, it ties it right into whatever resource we're gonna do. And, and I'll and I'll kind of walk through that. So I get a lot of questions on, on how do you, you know how do you memorize open API? You've heard this joke before, but it's very true. I don't remember my own kids' names. Uh, if I could go back, I would name them one, two, three, four, and five. So I this today I'm gonna hey, we got uh McKinnison, McKinnison, welcome. So if you're here, say give a hello because we want to give a hello back to you. And I'm easily distracted. Anyway, hey. So yeah, I jump around. Um, but yeah, I, I don't memorize Open API. I cheat and I build it in the console the first time and I export it. So I kind of prototype what I want. I model it. You want to use prototype, model, pr proof of concept, however you want to do. And then I export it. So today we're going to do that. I'm going to kind of show you how to export it and then Samify it. That's a word. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on getting it. It is a word. I don't like your doubt uh, that you're doing there. So scaffold is also a good word. Yes. So, all right. So let's jump over to my screen here. And, uh, okay, I can do that. All right. I'm going to leave our faces up a little bit because I want to see. Hey, uh, good looking Ozzy? faces. What's that? They're good looking faces. They are good looking faces. We're basically twins. I do like that. So, yes, Samify is a great word. Hey, Oz Ozzy, Ozzy, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, glad you're here. So, okay. So today we're going to build a simple, well, I've already built it. Uh, we're not going to, it's, it's out of concept or out of context a little bit on walk you through how to build that. I'm going to show you what I built in API Gateway. All right. And I'll show you some of the settings and things like that, but we, we can do, we can do that another time. If you want to see how to build a full API Gateway in the console, we can do that. But what I've got is I've got this API called DI, direct integration, all integrations. And this is from an example that I did 
uh, several weeks ago, it's probably been a month or so, where I showed how to do the HTTP API direct integrations. And if you're not familiar with that, there's five services that you can directly integrate. They are app config, SQS, step functions, <clears throat> excuse me, um, event bridge, and what am I missing, Rob? I'm missing one. AWS Lambda. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but there's another one. I'll get back to you on that. Yeah, AWS Lambda functions. That's right. So, and what I mean by direct integrations is you don't, and I'm going to just counter Rob right here now, you don't need a Lambda function to connect to these services. So, uh, and if I guess if I'm connecting to a Lambda, I don't need a Lambda to connect to a Lambda. There you go. So, and, and what you're able to do is uh, directly connect. So let me kind of show you that. So I'm going to go into our integrations real quick. Uh, and if you notice the, uh, is that big enough, you think? Yeah, that's big enough. All right. Yeah. I, I just ans asked and answered my own question. I, I feel solid. I feel like I understand me. So anyway, so what we've got here is I've got three endpoints on this. I'm connected to SQS, event. Oh, Kinesis was the other one. Kinesis. Kinesis. All right, so uh, Event Branch, Kinesis, and SQS. You ever, you ever see, what was that? I don't remember, but I remember Hercules, Hercules. It's an old movie, yeah. but anyway. All right, so so let's look at the Event Bridge integration. So if I go to the Event Bridge integration, I'm going to click that again. Oh, I'm, I'm already. There was a go. Nutty Professor, by the way. Was that the Nutty Professor? The Nutty right. Professor, the Eddie Murphy reboot. Yes, that's right. That's right. So I'm looking at the event bridge integration. There's several things that are, that are listed out. First of all, it's the event bridge action, which is put events. Okay. And we can actually go into edit this so you can kind of see it. And I can choose, it's already a put events integration. I can choose where in the body um, or where in the request or body or anything that I want to get the detail for this event bridge data that's going to be pushed. I give it a detail type. Uh, the source, and these are just some strings that I'm putting in to give it the right information. And then I have to link it to an event, uh, to the role, okay? So this is the invocation role, right? And I can do some descriptions, I can do some advanced settings if I want, or I can pass in other information, right? So this is pretty much how we set up an, an, an event bridge put events integration directly on HTTP APIs. Now, when I've got that, I did the same. We can look at our, at our Kinesis one, and you've got a put record event. Same thing. We, we set up this data, and we show how, to, you know, how we're going to link that to Kinesis. And finally, with SQS, and we're going to do this is a send message. You can, with SQS, kind of cool, you can get a send message, and I think it's called read message or, or get message. Uh, so you can actually read from the queue or put to the queue through HTTP APIs. You set some other things. So you can see just real generally here, and, and like I said, we're not going real deep into the HTTP API part, uh, but we set up these direct integrations. And I can go back to my routes, and you see on my routes, I've got these routes set up. You can see they're integrated uh, by this. I haven't set authentication up on this. If you're interested in how to do authorization, go back several. If you look at the sessions with Sam, uh, which I'm going to post uh it's s12d.com forward slash sessions or SWS. Can you throw that in, Rob? I got you, buddy. Uh, I'm on it. Right. So that's going to link you to in the sessions with Sam repo. If you're not familiar with this repo, uh, I'm sorry, not repo, but this uh, playlist, I talk directly about, I do quite a bit on HTTP API authorizations, how to use JWT authorizations uh, and different things like that. So I encourage you to uh, take a look at that. All righty, and I'm going to throw another one in here, and I'm going to do this by memory, so we'll see if this works. But uh, Ooh, HTTP, yeah, exactly. So this one should theoretically take you to Julian Wood, who's one of our other developer advocates. He is an expert. He's a smart guy and a sweet old accent. He sounds way cooler than Rob and I put together, um, but he doesn't look as good as we do. Um, sure. That's purely an opinion. Yes, but, better uh, have. Yeah, exactly. So uh, he wrote a blog on the different authorizers that you can use, which are JWT, IAM, or Lambda authorizers. So check that out. All right. So we've got our API gateway built up. So let's let's move on because then we're going to need to get get to the actual SAM part of this. Okay. So built into both REST API and HTTP APIs is an export. Okay, and in this export, I can choose a couple options. I'm going to do my latest configuration or my stages. I only use one stage on this, so I'm just going to choose the default. But really, these would look the same right now, the latest configuration or default. I, I can set different configurations if I want. I'm going to include the API gateway extensions. 
Okay. And then I want to in, of course, YAML because, yeah, exactly. I don't need it's to the go best. into that, but exactly. Yeah. Moving I'm going to go ahead and download this. All right. So then I'm going to go to my uh, show and finder. Okay. And okay, we're going to just move that out of the Ooh, way. See all that. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Bank statements, things like that. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is open this up with, uh, right now I'm just going to open it with uh, my Visual Studio Code, but we'll copy it over to my uh, other one here in just a moment. All right. So let's take a look. So we're going to go into Cloud9 and we're going to create in my playground. Okay. And we're going to create uh, the, the, the SAM for this and we'll look at how all this works. So we're going to do... Uh, I'm actually just gonna. I'm not even gonna do an init. No, normally I do things with same init, but we're just gonna do it uh, by hand here. So we're gonna just what? do a new folder. Yeah, we're gonna get crazy, and we're gonna call this. Uh, I don't know. We'll call this um, cheat because a lot of people think, oh, that's cheating. When you, it's not. It's not cheating. This is called being smart. But anyway, all right. So I'm gonna add a new file, and we're gonna call it my API .yaml file. Okay, so this is the file that will actually hold the, the information that we just pulled in. So let me grab that information so you can see that. And we'll open the API file. All right, so here's what was exported from that API. Let's walk through this real quick, okay? And it's, it's hard-coded everything, so some things to understand when you're looking at this. So we've got servers, so here's the API endpoint that it's going to be expecting to use. Uh, obviously, info version. Let's get down some some tags uh, created by Sam. Okay, so here's the path. Okay, now remember, uh, ignore this for a moment. Okay, remember I said we have extensibility built in. We just get rid of that for a minute by API Gateway. But a simple open API template looks like this. I have a path, a forward slash eb. It's going to be a post, and the responses. The only responses I have right there is a default response, and then here's the description. I'm really not doing much with this. Okay, but with the extensibility, I can go in here and I can say I'm going to do an integration subtype, which is the event bridge put events, which is exactly what you'll choose when you're actually in the console building that out. You'll look at, hey, we got a question there. Rob, you, are you on that question there? I'm trying, but is it's that, breaking my brain, man. It's breaking okay. my brain. All right. I might have I'll, to say I'll come, yeah, I'll yeah. come back to it in just a minute. It's the outside credentials. Of the credentials tag is, is just the role. What role am I going to use when we build that out? Okay. And then we're going to have our request parameters. This is where I actually I showed you in there where I can set the request.body.detail, the detail type, the source, things like that. Here's my payload format version, which is always 1.0 right now. They may update that later. As you remember, we've got new payloads with both HTTP API um, and, and the authorization on HTTP API. Uh, the type is AWS proxy. That's just the standard answer there. And the connection type is internet. Okay. So whenever you see things like this, you, you go, hmm, what is that? Well, that's so we can change that later. But right now, those are set to those values. You get the same thing with Kinesis and SQS. And then the very last thing we have here is this Amazon API Gateway import export version. What am I importing and exporting? All right. So here we go. Now, I'm going to jump on. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to build our SAM template to make to take action on this or to use this. So let's go ahead and move over real quick. So there's a couple things. We're going to need an event bridge bus. We're going to need a Kinesis uh, stream, data stream. And we're going to need an SQS uh, queue. <laughs> How are you doing? I can talk. All right. So let's go ahead and create a new one. So we're going to say... Uh, let's go new file. Let's try that again. Eric can't click on things. So we're going to call this, of course, template.yaml. All right. So my template.yaml file, where you, you don't often see. Now, I am going to copy and paste on this. I'm, I'm not even going to mess around with that. That's crazy for me to try to do everything from memory. So first thing is we declare our, our uh, what it is. It's our AWS template and what it is. And then, of course, the transform, because we want AWS to transform on that. And then I will, I'll go ahead and type the word resources. Uh, okay. And then we're going to, so we need a queue, a stream. And then we can just use the default uh, event bridge bus if I want to. We can create another one if I want, but for now, we'll just use the default event bridge bus. So here's two resources. And this is this is the bare minimum of what you need. And when you're building SAM templates, let me encourage you, start with the bare minimum. 
And what I do is I'll go through and I'll read the the resource. So you can, and, and you can, anytime you're looking for help for one of these, do a Google on the resource itself. Okay. That will get you right to the cloud formation and the same template uh, information. Okay. And so what I'll do is I'll look and I'll read through what's required, what's not. And then I'll get my bare minimum up and running. And then I'll start adding some more in. So a little tip on, on just getting up and running. It's kind of a happy path, right? Okay, so those are the two things that we need first. This, the next thing we need is we need our actual API gateway. And we're going to build an HTTP API. So let's actually put this first. Okay. Hello. Okay. All right. So, hey, that copied in right. Now, so here's what this is doing. In my HTTP API, of course, I'm giving it a type. And then I'm going to do my properties. And then all I have to do is pass in a definition body and I'm going to do, and there's other ways I can actually have the AP, the, the YAML for the open API directly in here. That's a lot to manage. Okay. So I'm going to actually do the, excuse me, the definition body and keep it in an external file. So I'm saying function transform. So this is using one of those intrinsic functions. Uh, and I can do, uh, or is it pseudo function? It's intrinsic function. Intrinsic. Pseudo yeah. Okay. Thank you. All righty. And then I'm going to do uh, my AWS include is the type I'm doing and the parameters. And then I poke, put in the location of API. So that's a little trick. You'll see this in almost every one of my API stacks that I'm building an HTTP API or a REST API, unless I'm doing some very simple stuff or I'm implicitly, uh, or I'm building them through implied from a function. If I'm using the, my, if I'm using the resource serverless, uh, colon, colon, HTTP API, you'll see me build that out. Did that question get answered, Rob, or should I take a moment? Uh, it got it got answered. It's okay. Awesome. It's slightly OT right. for Open API, so let's. Okay. Uh, All right. I'll... Okay. We'll Whisper. see if we can come back to the end too, if you need to. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Rob. As always, Rob yeah. makes this work. Uh, so. All right. So now we've got some things in here. We've got some bare minimum things. We've got our our HTTP API. We've got our queue. We've got our stream. Now, something else that we need is we need an HTTP API role, okay? So, or I'm sorry, a, a, a role. Now, this is a long one, and we'll be, all be glad I'm not typing this in, okay? But let's look, let's walk this. This is what gives me, this gives my role access to do what it needs to do. Now, you'll notice in here, and Rob, you'll be proud of me, my permissions, and, and call me out if it's not, my permissions are granular. All my permissions are very granular, and I also break my policies apart for easy readability. Okay, so let me talk through this. Okay, so here's my policy to be able to write directly to, well, first of all, here's my assume policy. So I'm saying that I'm going to allow API Gateway to assume this role. Okay, then in my policies, my first policy allows API to write to SQS, and I'm going to do the action. The only action I need is SQS send message. I'm going to allow it, and I only need to be able to do it on the my queue arm. Okay, he's going to call That's out. Matter. Okay, good. I thought you were going to say one problem. Okay. The second no. thing I do is in my uh, direct to event bridge. And, and you may say, Eric, that's very verbose. That may be, but that's also very secure, right? So I don't mind writing a little bit if I'm going to keep it secure, right? Now, with Lambda Functions, we've got these, these AWS managed SAM roles that make it a little easier. But these are, these are straight up cloud formation resources, straight up cloud formation roles. Okay, and then the last one is the direct right to Kinesis. And again, I'm limiting it to the resources, just the, the resources that uh, that we're writing to, right? Okay, and notice here, this is where I'm declaring which event bus I want to do. I could actually go back and build a, a, an event and then grab the, the ARN for that. But in this, I'm just going to use the default ARN. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. Okay. Hey, can I, so, can I interject one thing here, you buddy? Hey, please do. You just referenced those SAM policy templates. I dumped the link in the chat for people. Awesome. If you don't know what you need in terms of specific IAM permissions to access something, though you can use those, the, the actual bodies, and see which actions, what the specific action name is, what the specific resources are, and then just sort of copy that into your own policy like Eric did here yep. for resources yep. that don't support those yep. managed policy templates. It's a great way to see what does right look like. And that That's is it. not Thanks, cheating. It's not cheating. Good creates nope. great steals. That's right. You all know right. that. 
the imitation best form of flattery. Okay, so we've built out our stuff. We've got our API gateway, we've got our role, we've got our stream, and we've got our queue. Okay, so those are the basic things we need. And then we've got our event bridge, but we've decided to use the default bus, so we're good there. So now, when we go to our API template, we've got some problems here, okay? Not problems, but things we need to fix. This is where we samify, okay? This is where we move things around, okay? So that was cool. I have the whole video stream down here. So I saw you go, and then about two minutes later, so I go, down low, and, and I thought you did. Totally so, all right, opportunities for excellence. That is correct. Very cool. All right, uh, all right. So here's a couple things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the servers tag, okay? Because I'm if I relaunch this, I want it to be generic. I want this to build anywhere, okay? I don't want it to be looking for that. And it'll it'll build a server. API gave us oh, there's no server. That's okay. It'll use the one I've got. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Second thing, I can I can leave this in if I want. It'll actually Throw that out. So we're just going to, oh, hey, 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 hey. Okay. So we're going to do that. And then we'll leave the title and version if we want. Actually, I'm just going to leave the title. This is just for me uh, because I'll version that on there. Okay. So we got our tag. So first thing we're going to look at is here's the credentials. Because I copied and pasted this, but it, this is not really the ARN uh, for the actual role that I'm going to have created. So what, instead, what I need to do is I need to get that role. Now, remember, I'm creating a role down here. Hello. There we go. Called my uh, my HTTP API role. And how, so how I want to access this. Now, here's the tricky thing. Okay. When we use YAML, we have some YAML shortcuts like pound, you know, ref or pound get at or something like that. Those do not always work. Uh uh, those do not always work inside of external API files. If you're running into problems, probably the safest bet is to use the fully qualified pseudo functions and and uh, in, or intrinsic function pseudo parameters. So, uh, so that's what I do for safety. So for credentials, what we don't want this role here. What we're going to do is we're going to say instead. And yes, I am absolutely cheating on my own code here. So we'll just, I'm not, I was going to type it and try to impress you guys, but that's just dumb. Okay. So instead, and kind of clarify here, I'm going to say functions for errors. What's that? Yeah. Function get at my HTTP API role and then the ARN. Now, what that normally would look like in here is something like this my HTTP. API role, hang on, uh, API role, look at me typing, something like that. And and that might work here. I ha I haven't, I, I know I'm sounding vague. It's a little vaguer going on here. I'm not sure exactly where the line of when it works and when it doesn't. So for safety's sake, use the fully qualified intrinsic functions here. All right, so what I can do is every time credentials appear here, I can go down and I can do a copy paste, but it will take me about a second. Hey might be faster okay so anytime referring to that role we're going to do this and one more time here okay so that's the first thing we've done is we have now made this dynamically load the role that we're going to create okay so the next thing we look for other hard-coded uh, items so the next thing we've got here is the stream name Okay, so that stream name uh, is, yeah, we, we're going to have to load that up. So let's go ahead and grab that real quick here. Oh, wait for it. That is Kinesis stream. stream there we go. All right, so in the stream name, we're going to do, we're going to ref directly my stream. Now, this is where it, the more you do SAM, the more you do cloud formation, you learn what the output is from a cloud formation resource. <laughs> Arns are usually an attribute. Yeah, I know exactly. He's lying. I, know I get it wrong a hundred percent of the time. A hundred percent of the time. <laughs> and it's like, what are you second? It's like, no, I'm not going to get it wrong this time. I'm going to go with get at. Then it'll be that one time where arn yeah. is kicked out. Generally, an arn is in the get at, and a name or the primary thing is in the ref. But man, yeah, I, I get it wrong too. So, all right. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just go in. Let me. Let me. Grab this. OK, 
Okay, so for the stream name, I'm going to say, uh, let's see here. Paste that right. There we go. Hey, how you doing? You do not need stream name twice. <laughs> all right, so all I got to do there is ref my stream. Very simple, very straightforward, uh, and that will uh, put that in place. Okay, so what else? Now we have a queue URL we need to replace, right? So in, in a queue, that also the Q URL is kicked out in the in the simple reference as well. So I could go in here. Hello. A lot of copy and pasting. All right. So now I'm going to do here, ref my Q. Okay. And then anything else hard coded in here. All right. I think I got it all. What do you think, Rob? Okay. All right. It's anything obvious. Yeah, it's looking, it's looking pretty good. I'll try here, okay. And I'm not doing what the other thing I want to make sure of. Oh yeah, I did in my other one. I built a lambda function to be triggered by all these, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, you can look at that; it's it's in the repo. Uh, all right, so here's the test. So now that I've got that, so what I've done here is I've built this template, a simple template to build my inform information and my resources, okay. And then I've got my API YAML. Uh, that's going to contain all the resources. And let's just, for giggles and kicks, let's see if it works. All right, so CD, what do they call it, cheat? Okay, this is where you, and, and, and will this work the first time? I'm taking odds, what do you guys think? Uh, Rob, I'm, I'm gonna give you a, a one to 10, or, or a 50% chance, 90, what do you think? You know, it's, it's obvious you've done this a lot. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about it. You've been you've been taking yeah. the chances and making the baskets today. So let's Man, see it work. I, that's true. That's true. All right. So so we're gonna go Sam deploy G. Uh, first off, it sees the template. So that, so, I, so I spelled template right. So that's good. No, this is good. This is good. So, uh, you put G, and you know how I feel about that. I know. Uh -huh. Well, oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So here's what Rob likes. So we're gonna do this again. We're gonna do dash dash guided. <laughs> Okay, see that gives me one, two, three, four, five extra letters that I can fat finger and get wrong, including an extra. And you'll question. be you'll be grateful for those two weeks That's from right. now when you're looking That's through your history trying to figure out what you did. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna say this is my cheat stack. So we'll just call it cheat. Uh, I like to go to US West two and we'll confirm changes. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> So now we're just going to kind of wait. And this actually should be fairly quick, other than Kinesis might take a few to set up. But while we're doing that, I'm going to look at our question. So you all watch this. Rob, tell me if it blows up and, and I miss it. Uh, oh, that's, that's, that's good so far. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. So create. So the queue cr created, and that's very fast. Queues are, are created pretty quick. All right, so the question we had here, I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm trying to integrate CloudWatch subscription filter as an event to a Lambda function in same template. Uh, Lambda 1, okay. CloudWatch log stream subscription filter event Lambda, but it's a chicken. Yeah, okay, as the Lambda 1 is not written in any logs. Okay, yeah, that's right. So, okay, and it's not able to link CloudWatch subscription filter. I don't know. If the the depends on will actually do that because I get what you're saying is the subscription filter. All right, I'm gonna read this again in Lambda CloudWatch log stream. So what you might do is read actually read John's answer too because it's good. Sorry, what's that? Make sure you read John's answer too because it's pretty okay. Good. All right. Oh yeah, I'll read it. Well, John said uh, depends on that might fix it, and or are you actually creating the log? And I'm reading really fast, so maybe I'm missing it. But you could create the log stream in the CloudFormation template if you need it there beforehand. You can actually create a log stream. Then it should be good, uh, especially if you're doing that. Now, now again, I'm reading really fast, so I may be missing something. See now, okay. and then the thing I found with that is you can't specify a log group or a log stream in either serverless function or Lambda function, cloud formation. Because remember, each time you get a new environment, you're gonna get a new log stream. And each time you do a new deployment, you're gonna get a new log group. Is that right? Yeah, but the log- If you named your resource. No, 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 no. The log, you get a new log stream, but your log group stays, and it's the log group that needs yeah. to exist. So, all right, so I think if you create a log group, 
but but I don't know if you can point uh, the lambda yeah. function to that specific one. So start with John's answer. I like John's answer so far. Um, and, yeah. and but I, I'm going to check that out. That's something I want to test and try. <gasps> it deployed. Yeah, it deployed. I told you. Well, I mean, we didn't send any traffic to it. Well, no, and I don't have a lambda function <laughs> for us to even check, and, and we're at yeah. time, but that's okay. But if you want to try this with one that works, under the repo, uh, and uh, you'll see that there's one called uh, Direct Integrations All, all, uh, all Integrations. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, so I will be – yeah, John Walsh is asking us to tweet the answer. Glad to tweet the answer. That's something I'll, I'll probably mess around with later. Uh, I think what – well, we've got just a moment. Let's try this. So yeah. We go. Well, hey, while go you ahead, do that, Brad. I'm going to pop a question up here. I think it's a pretty important one. Um, and so thank you, Crafty246, for asking it. What are the advantages of using Swagger or Open API to manage APIs? And I can think of a couple, but I'd like to hear uh, where where you see that, Eric. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, and, and I agree. That's, a, that's an excellent question. I'm looking here real quick. Uh, well, in line maybe I'll give mine while you do that. I give you the wrong yeah. direction there. You keep you keep on that. So yeah, I okay. see two two key okay. advantages. Um, one, it's a contract, right? And so you can dynamically generate your API from it, but you can also dynamically generate SDK clients from that same definition. And then as your API uh, mutates over time, you can a ensure backwards compatibility by examining previous versions of that contract and testing against them for the patch minor major change that you're making. Um, yeah. You can also ensure that your new, so for your new clients. Um, and then the the second one, and don't underestimate this, it's visualization and things like that, documentation. Um, Swagger originally started before it became open API, mainly as a way of documenting your APIs so that you could just hand that documentation off to developers especially if you have you know, internal developers from other teams, external developers, it's a way of self-documenting your API in terms of what is, not what you think should be. So That's right. those are my two. Eric? Yeah, I, yeah, and I'll expand on that. The, the one, the, the maintenance or the, or the management, the, the infrastructure's code is huge. Now you can do this in CloudFormation. You can do it in CDK. You can do it in Terraform. You can do it in a lot of different places, and you can build those out specifically. I can actually build the the seventeen different unique resources it takes to build an API gateway in CloudFormation. What cloud, what open API does is it generates those uh, implicitly for you. It, it says, okay, if I've got this one stack, then I'm going to generate all the pieces for me. So for me, that's easier. Two, open API, I can pick it up. If I'm using CloudFormation, I can pick it up. I can drop it into SAM. I can pick it up. I can drop it into CDK. I can, it is going to be cross-platform across. Terraform will use open API to describe it. So mm -hmm. that gives you flexibility to, if you are changing and moving across different infrastructure as code uh, solutions. Uh, three, am I at three? I rarely get past two. Three. Right, yeah, three. three. Okay, <laughs> three is the ability to test. So Open API has some clients. I mean, you can go up to the website and you can drop your Open API in there, and it'll show you your structure, and you can run tests against it. Also, if you're not familiar with our uh, Dev Portal, there's a Dev Portal you can launch it from the the, solution, the serverless application repository or GitHub repo. That uses Open API to test your uh, the, the Open API structure to test your APIs as well. So it's this cross-platform, cross, you know, uh, uh, infrastructure as code kind of idea, and I think it 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 will help you move around. You can also use Open API, uh, and I'll be talking about this if, if you're not familiar at reInvent. I've been talking about a lot of this, where you can take Open API, and if I've got, let's say, I built something on another cloud service or on you know any any different thing, I can generally they will export to Open API, and I can use that to migrate. To another cloud service, hopefully AWS. Uh, but and so I can migrate straight in. Like. I can migrate from what's that? That's what we like. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what we like. I can migrate from REST to HTTP API as well. So uh, there you go. I don't have the answer to that other question, uh, but I will look around uh, and see what I can find out. Watch over the next couple of days, uh, and I'll see if I can tweet out an answer. That's that's an interesting uh, that's an interesting uh, you know conundrum. So. Uh, and I also want to take about, I'm not a great instant reader and comprehender. Uh, so it takes me a moment to think it through. Then I go, oh, okay, I know the answer to that. So 
uh, I, I want to reread it and, and, and see if I can figure out an answer for you. All right, with that, Rob, I think we're done. Did I miss something? There's an, Yeah, there's one more question in here that, that I think you might know the answer to. I definitely don't. Um, okay. Came off, I think it's your Periscope feed, but right. we got I am Tesso or maybe it's Ian. I don't know. Trying to add cores to an API, but the SAM docs indicate I need to define a definition body. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So you can add cores to, to AP, HTTP APIs in the definition body like we just did. So let's, let's go back real quick and, and I'll show you that. Okay. So if I want to do cores, I can go in here and I can configure that and I can say, uh, and it, you know, I'm not even going to do it. It'll kill me. I'm going to do low. I was going to say, I'll do star for now, but I tell you, get out of the habit of that. Okay. So I'm going to do localhost 8080. And I actually need my, okay. So let's say I want to test from this. Okay. So I can add this as a valid uh, control origin. I can set up my headers, things like that. And let's go ahead and save that. Now, uh, okay. What, what do you not like? Hang on a sec. Configure. Is it my hand? Oh, you know what? Yeah. Local host. I don't think I need the protocol there. Try that again. About what is it not liking? Okay, everybody watching this? All righty. No, I can feel you. I have to think here. All right, so we'll just go. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, I think I know what it is. Hang on a second. So HPS. I think it is simply the, yeah, hang on a second, local host colon 8080. I think I want the, we're all going to sit here until Eric figures this out. I I <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, so that was it. So what I was doing is I was adding the, the ticks on either side or the quotes on either side, uh, which you only need if you're using star. So I might have done a star once or twice in my past life. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so, so with this, now I can go to my export. And I can do that again. So let's go ahead and grab the latest configuration default, actually. And we'll download that. And let me so find her. Let me just grab this and pull it over so you'll be able to see it. Open with. All righty. Okay, so if we go back to our template here, API YAML, and I really am getting to your answer. Okay, now I'm going to lose all my updating, but that's okay. Oh, I did it in JSON. That just, oh, that's going to end my day. That's all right. That's all right. So if you look in here, now I'm going to search for localhost. There it is. So here's the core settings. This is where it's asking you in the definition body, go ahead and set up, uh, you know, allow credentials, return that off so we're not passing credentials, allow origins. And this is the one. You can have multiple origins there. That's how you define it in, in a definition body. Now, if you want to define it directly in the uh, right in the HTTP API, so this is where it gets in. Sometimes, sometimes we use Open API. Some things we do in SAM, and sometimes we can. They kind of uh, work in both places. But if I want to go in here, and let's just pull up that resource real quick. So again, this is I always encourage to to look into documents this way. API, and I'll blow this up. I know it's small. Okay. So if you look at the documents, okay. All right. So in the cores configuration, I can do it directly in uh, C configuration for HTTP API. Here we go. Let me go back to that. I can do it directly. It's a it's a type. It's a string. Uh, it's a course configuration. Hang on a second. Here. There you go. So this is what it's going to look like. Is you can literally just pass your allow credentials, allow headers. It's a list. Uh, and so I don't know if they have. Yeah, here's an example. So here's how I would pass it in directly in the SAM template. All right. So if I, I should be able to do both of those when I'm when I'm do either it's, it shows up in the uh, in the open API or it shows up inside uh, or you put it in the scene. Hopefully that answered the question that was that was a, a long way to go there. Um, but um, hopefully that answered your question. It looks like we got another question. It's follow up on the original okay I've, okay so I'll, thanks I'll that that yeah. I've contacted separately. Okay. So we're gonna chase right. awesome. it down together. You and Thank I. you. 
All right. Well, I hope that helps. Uh, and reach out to me. You can find me at EDJ Geek. You can see it right there on my uh, little name there, and uh, my, oh, little yeah. name, my little name thing. And oh, there's yeah. Rob, who's who's RTS Rob. And uh, it, I feel like okay, it worked. Uh -huh. I, I just felt like my bro what are you what are you doing? What's I'm pointing at my um at my Twitter handle. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. Yeah, here. But on the here's other one, one, it was oh, like right. here, and then you move okay, the screen. Right. There we go. And then there's Sam. Ooh, this is a hard thing to do. So, and there's Rob. So, all right. With that, we're now we're just wasting time. We yeah. owe you a Thanks minute of your life everybody. back because we're silly. So, yeah. Uh, but we do appreciate you joining us, and we will be here next week. Uh, Mo Alice is going to be joining me. He's one of our partner essays. He's going to be talking about utilities in Sam. Uh, now we've talked a little bit about Sam logs and Sam validate and and some of the different things Sam create event, but he's going to go deep in those filtering with logs. How do I find things from yesterday? How do I find things from three weeks ago? Uh, how do I generate events? How do you know different things like that? How do I look at what my template's going to look like transformed right there locally on my desk? Yeah, yeah. No. Do I have your attention now? That's no. right. So you can actually do a transform right from Sam. Uh, the same utility and see what it's going to look like to help you debug and things like that. So with that, I'm out of here. And Rob, thanks again, as ever. Uh, I appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye, I'll buddy. see you later. See you, man.